So we're going to make an HTML and JavaScript program that will receive a number of miles from a user and then convert that to kilometers. You can see the structure of the web page here. We've got a heading with the title. Uh, we have an entry blank where we're going to enter the number of miles. Let's say we want to type in three miles and then a button here when we press it it should convert the miles to kilometers and the result will display here in the gray area and sure enough it does so what this is saying is three miles is 4.8280 kilometers okay we're going to go ahead and rate make this program right now we're going to use Khan Academy and their new web page uh, programming feature to do that. When you make a new web page, you can see that there's a skeleton HTML document here with a heading, a header, and a title, and then a body section. So we're going to go ahead and start this program. I'm going to change the title to convert miles to kilometers. And you can see the title uh, changes up there. Periodically, I'm going to save my program just to make sure that I don't lose any of my work. One of the things we want to do is style this page. Oh, it's going to reload here. Let's style this page. So we're going to add some style with CSS. And uh, for the body, I'm going to add a margin of 40 pixels. And what else can I do? Let's change the background color. Uh, spell it right, man. And that, that color that I had was RGB 255, comma 200, comma 160. So there's that nasty background color that I had. I'm gonna make the font size a little bigger. Let's make it 20 pixels. And that's enough for the body. Uh, that little gray paragraph that where the kilometers printed out, where they displayed, I named that output paragraph. So that's going to be the ID that I use for that. And I want to make sure that I make that thing gray. So my background color for that particular paragraph. Uh, I used a hexadecimal number for that. That's hashtag CE, 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 which makes that gray color. And I'm going to assign a width of 300 pixels. We'll see if that works. You can always adjust this later. And I'm going to put a little bit of padding. Padding is the space between the text and the edge of the gray um, paragraph. Let's make that 10 pixels. It just makes it look a little nicer. I'm also going to have a container div element that will have that border that I had around the screen. Let's just show you again what I mean. See how there's this black border around here? So that border we're going to use with a div element. And I'm going to call that container. So I'll add a ID for the container. And we'll style that thing with some CSS. Let's put a border around it. And our border is going to be two pixels. It's going to be solid. And the color is black. You can put all three of those properties in the border line, in the border statement. And I'll also put some padding on that one as well. Um, let's go ahead and make that. I will use 15 pixels just to see if that looks nice. And if it doesn't, like I said, we can adjust that later. So we've got some style in our heading. Oops, I got one too many. Um, curly braces there. That's enough for the style. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to have in our body. As I mentioned, I'm going to put that div container, which the ID was container, around uh, my entire display. And so now you can see that that div is showing up and it's just a small rectangle. Uh, that's where all of our elements will be placed. 
So on this page, as you can see, I have a header. We'll call that an H1, and we'll say convert miles to kilometers. You get to listen and watch me type, which is exciting, I know. So there's my header. Since the screen width is smaller uh, than the whole web page, you can see that it went to a second line. But when we view this full screen, it will spread out like it does here. OK. Um, and then the next thing you'll notice is I have uh, a paragraph where I type the text, Enter Miles. So I'll start with that. And here it comes. I see it shows right up on the screen. And then I have a new element here where I'm allowed to type information in. That's called an input. And its type is text. So I add that right to my paragraph. I just make an input element. And its type is text. There's different types of input elements. My input type is text. Uh, I need to give it an ID because I'm going to retrieve some information from it later. So I'm going to call it miles since that's what I'm typing in. And that's enough for that input element. When you make an input element, you just have a closing uh, greater than sign, and you don't need a separate closing tag. And that paragraph is basically done. OK, and you can see now that I've ended the paragraph, my input element shows up there. Excellent. OK. Next thing on my web page is the output paragraph, the gray paragraph there. So I'm going to make a new paragraph. And I've already set up uh, some styling for the output paragraph and gave it the name output paragraph. So that's the ID I'm going to use. And I want to start with just some question marks here. So I'll put kilometers equals because we're not sure what's going to go there yet. And then we'll close that paragraph off. And then the last thing on my screen is an element that looks like a button, a push button. That is a button element. And its type is button. So when you want a button to show up on the screen, excuse me, you make a button element, it's type as button. Now this button needs an action assigned to it. And there's a property called on click that you can attach to a button so that you don't have to do an add listener. And later I will make a function called on convert click. So that's the function that I'm associating with this element. Then you close off the button tag. You can see that the closing tag pops up automatically with autocomplete on Khan Academy, which is great. And then the words that you type between the opening tag and the closing tag will show up on the button. So we wanted to say convert. And so I type that there. It's not on the screen yet, but I'm going to close off my paragraph. And now I have my convert button right there. So I have all the elements in place. This is called the user interface. There's a title. There's a place where we can type the miles. There's a gray box where the output will show up. And there's a button that will receive our input uh, to tell us to execute the program. All of that user interface, uh, all those user interface elements go in the body. They're the HTML. Now, once we've got all the user interface elements in place, we need to add functionality. We do that through JavaScript. And the way we include JavaScript in HTML files is with script tags. So you can see when I enter the script tags, it gives me the closing tag. And then in between those two is where I will make all my JavaScript. So we really only want one function, and that's the callback called onConvertClick. Since we're using this button element, we don't have to use add listener to attach the callback function. It's already attached here in the onClick property. So we're going to, oops, I got to start this with var. Var onClick equals function. 
And the first thing my JavaScript needs is it needs access to those elements that cre we created. So I'm going to need to be able to retrieve the miles, and I'm going to need to be able to send information to output paragraphs. So I'm going to start right out by making those variables. So I'll make a variable for miles, and I'll use document dot get element by ID. And then the first ID will be miles. Oops. I like to use the double quotes for these, although you can actually use the single quotes also. I will also make an um, output paragraph variable for the output paragraph element. That's ID is output paragraph. And so I've got my two elements. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick here. For programs like this, we are expecting the user to type in numbers. If they don't type in numbers, we can't do our math, right? We can't do the conversion to kilometers. That's called bad input. So we're going to start to check to see if users are typing in good input or bad input. If there's garbage in, we get garbage out. That's the old phrase. So the way we do that is with, well, there's a couple of different ways, but we're going to use an if block. And so I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to say if, and then we're going to use a function called is not a number. Okay? Is not a number is is nan. It's built into JavaScript. And if I put miles in here, this will either say yes or no. So if miles is not a number, that's a true, meaning it's not a number, then I need to display an error message. If it is not not a number, then it is a number, and so we'll let go ahead and compute the calculation. So if it's not a number, I'm going to do an error message. I'll just put a little comment here so we know this is my error message. And in my output paragraph, I'll set the text content to, sorry, you didn't enter a number. Okay. Then you can say something like try again if you want. I don't know if my paragraph's longer for that. We'll just, we'll just say, sorry, you didn't enter a number. Okay. Put whatever error message you want to end up putting there. Okay, so we've got, if it's not a number, we're going to set the text content to an error message. And then if it is a number, that would be our else, we're going to go ahead and do this computation. So I'm going to make a new variable called kilo for kilometers. The way that you convert The way that you convert miles to kilometers is you multiply by 1.60934. So I'm going to multiply 1.60934 by the number of miles. But there's a catch. When you enter the value of miles, um, it is a string variable. It's text. When we make this calculation, we want to use it as though it were a value, a number value. So before you type the word miles, you have to use the function built into JavaScript called parse float. That turns the information into a number that you can do math with. All right. So I make this new variable called kilo. It's my number of miles times 1.60934. That's the conversion. That's the math that you do to convert it. Now that I have the answer, I just need to get it to show up in the output paragraph. So now I'm going to set the text content for output paragraph to my result. So I'm going to say the kilometers equals, and then I'll add on that kilo variable. And it will convert it to a string and put it onto the end. 
And then let's put a period at the end of our sentence just to make it grammatically correct. Okay, that is the end of my if block, and it's also the end of my function. Now, remember, when you use a var statement to declare a function, at the end of this curly brace, I have to put a semicolon there. All right, so let's see if we can scroll through this thing. And I'm sorry for the uh, wraparound in some of this text, but let's just see what we have. We declare our document as an HTML document. This was all standard um, when you make a new web page on Khan Academy. I changed the title to convert miles to kilometers, which is good. Did some styling of the body, which is the background color and the margins, the output paragraph, which is the gray part, and then the container, it's just to draw the box around it to make it look a little nicer. In the body, I begin by putting in my user interface, the title in the header, the paragraph to receive the input, the paragraph to display the output, and a new button that will allow me to click and see the results. So let's test this thing out. Earlier on the original web page, I typed three, and the answer came out as 4.82802. Let's see if that happens here. Press three, hit convert. Uh-oh, it says I didn't type in a number. So here's my problem. What is my problem? Oh, this video is going to crash and burn if I don't fix this now. Let's do parse. This is sometimes happening. I forgot to parse float this thing. Let's see if this helps. It should. Um, we're going to parse float miles and see if it's a number. Let's try this again. Type in a three. Sorry you didn't enter a number. I am going to be so mad if I have to stop this video. I have to stop the video. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, the problem, which I didn't catch, was uh, when you're going to get the document uh, .get element by ID uh, for for element miles, we don't want to grab uh, an object. Uh, we don't want to grab the element. We want to grab the value that's typed into the element. To do that, you have to type dot value at the end of your um, program. So if I put dot value here, then if I go take my parse float out of here, then we can check to see if this thing's a number or not. So I took put it back to where I had it. So that code I had correct. Uh, I just forgot to grab the value. Now if I type a 3 in here and I hit convert, it gives me the value, uh, the kilometers, which is 4.82802. And I decided I wanted it to say km at the end here uh, when I type this in. So now if I type 3, I get the 4 point whatever. If you want to type in... 20 miles and find out how many kilometers that is. It's 32.1868 kilometers. Let's put a space right there. And let's try this again. What's 40 miles? How many kilometers is 40 miles? That's 64 kilometers. 64.37. So learned a valuable lesson here. And that is when you want to grab the information that's typed into an input element using JavaScript, make sure you put the dot value at the end of that line. And then the other new thing that we've learned here is that we use is not a number to make sure that they're typing in a number. For example, watch this. If I type in ha ha here and I hit the button, it says, sorry, you didn't enter a number. You can't do math without a number. Okay, so you're going to get a printout of this where you can try and enter this program and see if you can get to do the same things. And then we'll start to make adjustments to this code once we get used to the process. Uh, thanks for listening. Good luck on your work. I'm saving.